Hello everyone, and welcome to Blue Cube channel. Continuing with our Adobe Animate course from beginner to advanced, in this video I'm going to show you how to create scenes in animation. Each scene is basically a unique image or camera angle inside your animation. A collection of scenes works kind of like a series of film shots, put together in a certain order to build the animated story. When you create a new document, on the left you'll see something called Scene 1. If you click on it, you'll notice we only have one scene to start with. Next, let's check out the document settings. If you go to the Properties panel and select your document with the free transform tool, in the document settings you'll see the document I created is 1280 by 720, running at 30 frames per second. The important thing here is that any new scene I add later will automatically use the same size and settings. Now, let's go to the Assets panel and add a background and a character to our project. In the Animate section under Character, I'll scroll down and grab a walking character, drop it into the stage, and there we go, it's placed in the scene. Then I'll close Animate, head over to Static, and choose a background. I'll drag and drop it into my document, wait a moment for it to load, and then scale it up by holding Shift from the corner. Finally, I'll move the background layer to the very bottom so our dog character is visible on top. By default, this background only comes in with one frame. So I'll click and drag up to the frame where the dog ends, right-click, and hit Insert Frame so the background extends across the timeline. That gives us our first scene. Now at the last frame, I'll select only the dog, hold Shift, and move it forward a little bit, this spot looks good. To make the animation longer, I'll select both frames and drag them out to about frame 75. On the dog layer, I'll right-click and choose Create Classic Tween. If I hit play, you'll see the dog moves across the scene. Next, I want my animation to jump right into another scene with a new character. So I'll open the Scene Panel from Window. The shortcut is Shift plus F2. Here you can see Scene 1. To make a new scene, I just click the plus button, Add Scene, and now we've got Scene 2. Inside Scene 2, I'll drag in another background, scale it with Shift, and place it nicely. I'll lock the layer so it doesn't get moved accidentally. Now I'll go back to Animate and pick a new character for this scene, let's say a crab. I'll drag and drop it into place, and now the crab is part of this scene. So now in Scene 2 I have this animation, and in Scene 1 I have the dog animation. That means we've created two separate animations. But if I just press play, Animate only shows the scene I'm currently on. To preview everything together, I press Ctrl plus Enter or go to Control Test. You'll see that as soon as Scene 1 finishes, Scene 2 automatically plays. This keeps looping in preview, but in the final export it will play through the scenes once in order. Let's go back to Scene 1 and make a copy. I'll click Duplicate, wait for it to generate, and rename it to Scene 3. I'll drag it down so the order is Scene 1, then Scene 2, then Scene 3. Now, Scene 3 is just a copy of Scene 1. Now I want this dog, which is moving along the path, to come back and walk the path in reverse. I'll only keep these last two keyframes so that I can continue the character's animation in the third scene. So, I place the timeline marker here and hold down the left mouse button. I select all of these frames except the last two keyframes, and I can either click Remove Frames or right click and choose Remove Frames from the menu, it makes no difference. As you can see, it only removed the frames from the dog's layer, and now only the last keyframe remains. For the scene layer, I'll do exactly the same thing. Technically, it isn't necessary but I'll do it anyway so you can see how it works. 
So, in scene 3 we only have two keyframes. I'll select the dog, right click, go to transform, and choose flip horizontal so the direction flips. If I double click on the dog, you'll notice its walking cycle frames are already there by default, these are built into the character, so we don't need to touch them. Now, at frame 75, I hold down the left mouse button on both layers. This way, the frames turn blue, and then I click on insert frame. This creates additional frames for me. Next, I move to the last frame, click on the dog, hold down shift, and move it forward. Finally, I right click here and select create classic tween. If I go back to control test, here's what happens. First the dog walks forward, then scene 2 plays with the crab, and then in scene 3 the dog walks back. This keeps looping smoothly. That's the power of scenes, you can chain them together however you want. In fact, I could rearrange them so scene 3 comes before scene 2, giving me a different playback order. When I test again, you'll see the scenes play in this new sequence. Let's add a camera to scene 1. Sometimes you need to follow your character from different angles. So at frame 1 in scene 1, I'll click on the camera button. This way, the camera is created. I zoom in a little on the dog character. In the lesson about the camera, we said that these lines represent the camera frame, so I adjust it. Then I go to the very last frame here and move the camera forward, this position looks good. Now I right click on the camera layer and choose create classic tween. If I press play, you can see that the camera moves in this scene and also zooms in a little. I can even increase the zoom so that you can see it more clearly. Now, from the control menu, I select test. You can see that first, we zoom in on the dog, then we view the dog again from a farther angle, and after that, the next scene is displayed in this way. So, as I mentioned, we can use camera angles both within a single scene and across different scenes. Here I move back a little. I could create cameras for all the scenes, but for this example, I only added one for scene 1. Finally, in order to export all the scenes in sequence, I go to the file menu, then export, and choose export video slash media. If you remember from earlier lessons, I showed you how to export or render an animation. But when we have multiple scenes, we must select this option so that it exports all the scenes, in the same order they appear in the scene panel. We can also change the format here, which I already explained in detail before. If you want to render just one scene separately, you can come here, select scene, choose the scene you want, and click export. But in the end, I click on entire movie so it exports all of my scenes. When I click export, it takes me to Adobe Media Encoder. If I press start here, the animation will be exported for me. Lastly, if there's any scene you don't need and want to delete, just select it here, click the delete button, and confirm with OK. For example, scene 3 is removed this way. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial. If you enjoyed this lesson and found it helpful, please like this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to watch the next tutorials. Until the next video, goodbye for now.